hope you have enjoyed your week here with us at the Range Cattle Research and Education Center for this year's Virtual Youth Field Day. Today's presentation is titled Reproduction Deconstruction. My name is Liz Palmer and I will be starting this presentation, but I will later be joined by Sonia Crawford and Taylor Davis. This is a brief outline of the topics that we will be discussing today. First, we will be highlighting the importance of reproduction, particularly to Florida cattle producers. We will also be talking about different management practices that affect reproduction. Then we'll be looking at the different components of the reproductive system, as well as the timing events in the reproductive cycle. And then we'll be concluding this presentation with a live deconstruction. It is important to have knowledge in all of these areas so we can better understand reproduction and understand problems that are associated with reproduction. Therefore, we can improve our reproductive efficiency on our cattle operations. Florida's cattle industry is primarily cow-calf. At the end of the day, our primary goal as cow-calf producers is to provide a wholesome and nutritious product for you and your family. Cow-calf producers hope to wean a calf every year from every cow and heifer that was exposed to a breeding program. Reproduction therefore impacts livestock production and through that it can impact the meat, milk, and fiber production of the beef industry. Reproduction occurs in an order of events. It is important to understand these order of events to have a successful reproductive program. Typically, you need to consider the time of heat or estrus and then ovulation to understand when you're going to breed your cows or your heifers. Cow-calf producers should also consider whether they would like to use artificial insemination, which typically also includes an estrus synchronization program prior to breeding, or if they would like to use natural breeding. That concludes my portion of this presentation. Next, you will be hearing from Ms. Crawford, who will be talking about the reproductive system, the timing of the reproductive reproduction cycle, and we'll be um, looking at the structure of the reproductive system. Before reproduction may be achieved, some of the basics must be considered, such as proper nutrition, genetics, and health. Proper nutrition is important for breeding, rebreeding, as well as fetal development. This may be assessed using the body condition score on your cows, which is based on a scale one to nine. One being very thin and nine very obese. Body condition score of five is optimal for cows and six for heifers. The establishment of a health management program is important for the well-being of the animal and to minimize death losses. Visit with your local veterinarian to develop a plan that fits your herd. Genetics is also important in reproductive management. Genetic traits are equally shared by the heifer or the cow and the bull. Proper selection of herd replacements will assist in minimizing reproductive problems. You must select for sound and fertile bulls if natural breeding. This may be achieved by understanding expected progeny differences, also known as EPDs. If artificial inseminating, one will select from desired traits, such as utilizing the EPDs. It is also important to cull non-breeding cows. Heifers and cows may be managed differently. Breed heifers 21 days earlier than the rest of the cow herd. The cow's reproductive tract is located in the pelvic and abdominal cavity. Thorough knowledge of structures of female reproductive system is essential for successful palpation. You will hear these terms again in the deconstruction process presented by Ms. Davis. Some of these terms are vulva, which is external opening or entrance. The vagina is the birth canal and semen deposit area. The cervix is the gateway. The uterus has the body and two horns and it houses the fetus. 
it's the oviducts or the tubes where conception occurs. And ovaries are referred to as the female sex cells. Fertility is important to get the female to breed for the first time and to carry the calf all the way through gestation to birth. Uh, the calf is approximately 283 days or nine months, which is the same as your mom. The length of the estrus cycle is 21 days, with the window of time for the cow or heifer to become pregnant is 14 to 18 hours, referred to as the length of heat. Ovulation is 30 hours after heat begins, which is the egg is released from the ovary. After the birth of the calf, the postpartum time is approximately 40 days plus, which is the time the cow or the heifer may rebreed. The live deconstruction will be presented by Ms. Davis. Basic knowledge in this area will help you to do a better job of getting the cow or the heifer pregnant, especially when using artificial insemination. It will also enable you to do a better job and control reproductive diseases and calving problems. With that, I'm going to turn it over to Ms. Davis. Hi, everyone. My name is Taylor Davis, and like Sonia said, I am the livestock agent for Highlands County. Now we're gonna talk about the anatomy and the structures of the female reproductive tract. So we're gonna start our way working from the outside inward. So our first structure, you might actually be able to see it looking, just looking at a cow. It's called the vulva. And the vulva provides extra protection to the vagina. And he, you also might notice that it becomes swollen and has a red coloration to it. Our next structure we're going to dis discuss is called the vestibule. This is a common duct for urine and in the fetus. You also might notice this big sac over to the side. This is known as the bladder. Coming back to the reproductive tract, we're gonna discuss the vagina. And the vagina is located between the bladder and the cervix, so this area to prevent bacterial growth. It has a 5.7 pH. Our next structure is known as the fornix vagina. And it is at the entry point of the cervix right here. This at the fornix vagina is the site of semen deposit during natural mating. It also secretes mucus during estrus. Our next structure is called the cervix. This is also known as a landmark when manually palpating because it feels very different than any other structure in the reproductive tract. It's very sphincter-like, so in other words, it feels very similar to a chicken neck. It produces mucus during estrus, and it is sealed right here during pregnancy to prevent any pathogens from entering the and harming the developing fetus. It also serves as a birth canal during parturition. A lot of times, when you're checking cows, you might notice just from looking at a cow from the outside that it has some mucus coming out of her vulva, the area where she urinates. This is a sign that the cow or the heifer is in heat and that mucus is coming from the fornix vagina and the cervix. Our next structure we're going to discuss 
it's two parts in one, is the uterine body, which is this area, but we also have two uterine horns. These are bicornate, meaning that there are two. And these structures make up the uterus. This is where semen is deposited during artificially inseminating. So when you are AIing, you will take your rod and manipulate it through the cervix. And at the very end of the cervix, in the uterine body, is where you deposit the semen. The function of the uterus is for embryo development and attachment of the embryo. Our next structures, there are two of them, and they are called the oviducts. And I'll have to show you them, you kind of have to dig for them. So remember we discussed the uterine horns. This is the ovary, I will discuss that in a minute. But then if you pull it apart, you'll be able to find the oviduct, which is a long tubular structure. The oviduct is also known as fallopian tubes, and each reproductive tract has two. It connects the uterine horns to the ovaries. It transports the sperm and the oocyte through smooth muscle contractions. So when the ovary releases an oocyte, it manipulates it through the oviduct into the uterine horn. Our next structure also has two of them in each reproductive tract. These are known as the ovaries. The ovaries are actually controlled by two hormones that are produced in your brain from the pituitary gland. These hormones are follicle stimulating hormone, also known as FSH, and the luteinizing hormone, also known as LH. These ovaries have many functions during their lifespan. These produce their own hormones, known as estrogen and progesterone. Estrogen is a hormone that regulates the estrus cycle. And progesterone prepares the uterus for pregnancy. While pregnant, it maintains the pregnancy in the uterine body. These ovaries are also in charge of gamete production. They develop, mature, and ovulate oocytes, also known as eggs. Now we're going to do a dissection. Here is my scalpel and I'm going to cut from the vagina all the way through the cervix, specifically to show you the cervix and the folds within them. It gets real tough around the cervix. There are multiple layers that we have to cut through. So you can start to see the cervix popping through. And you can see all the different folds we're coming into. So when you're AIing a cow or a heifer, it can be tricky because not every cervix is the same. Some of them have lumps, some of them are bent, some of them have very tricky folds you have to move your rod through.
So you can see kind of the difference in texture between the vagina and the cervix. This is the entryway into the cervix right here. You can see how it, it's originally a hole. And when AIing, you have to work through these crevices. See how it, if it was together and then you pulled it apart, all these different folds. Now cutting into the uterine body, you can see it's a different texture here as well as compared to the cervix. The baby can develop within the uterus, so that can be in the uterine body or within a uterine horn. A lot of times if it's in the uterine horn, the horn just expands and it kind of falls into the uterine body. So when getting these two reproductive tracts, I noticed one of them looked very odd. That reproductive tract had previously been pregnant, but whenever I received the tract, it was cut from the cervix upward. So I received all the bottom half of the tract, but not the uterus or the uterine body, ovaries or oviduct. Let me show you. So you can see the tract has been cut off at the cervix right here. And it looks very strange with all of these big pods in them. What could these be? Well, these are actually very unique. These are what we call a car uncle. You only see these on a bred cow or a bred heifer. These develop when the amniotic sac, which holds the fetus inside the uterus, is attached to the side. So the, this is part of the amniotic sac from the bred cow or heifer. And you see these very unique about quarter sized structures across it. These are known as a cotyledon. Now the importance of these two structures is that the amniotic sac is attached to the side of the uterus through these structures. When put together, it is very similar to Velcro. They are intertwined. And once they are intertwined in a normal pregnancy, together they are called a placentome. We hope you guys enjoyed this video and tried to hold my phone nice and straight for our Facebook audience. Um, so all about reproduction. Now we're going to try to test your knowledge a little bit. Which structure is known as a landmark when palpating? The fornix vagina, the cervix, the uterus, or the ovary? All right, so we do have 88% of y'all got it correct. The cervix. Um, one person, it's okay if you got it wrong. We're all learning. Um, but yes, that is correct. The cervix is also known as a landmark when palpating because it feels so much differently than any other structure in the reproductive tract. For reproduction to be achieved, what basics should be considered? A, nutrition, B, health, C, genetics, or D, all of the above? All right, it looks like everyone got that one correct. We had 100% say all of the above, and that is correct. Um, for reproduction, it is also important to consider nutrition, the health of the cow, as well as the genetics of the bull that you are using. Okay, so our last question 
is what is the range of body condition score for evaluation of cattle? A, 1 to 20, B, 1 to 9, C, 1 to 5, or D, 1 to 3? Oh, we're kind of all over the board, and that's okay. 55% um, of y'all, so over half, did um, the correct answer was B, 1 to 9. Amazing. All right. Okay, ladies. So that is it for our poll questions, but we did during the video have a few questions come in. So um, if you guys, um, Taylor and Liz, want to just work through those on Zoom, and there was a, one or two on Facebook, and um, I will just slip away for a few minutes. And if I catch something or it gets close to time, I'll let you know. But we've got about 10 minutes for questions. Awesome. All right, so I will take the first question. Um, the one, someone on Zoom asked, what age can you breed a beef cow? So we do have a couple goals when we're talking about um, breeding beef cattle. The first one is that we want them to attain puberty between 12 to 13 months of age. And then we want them to achieve pregnancy by about 15 months of age. So that gives them about two to three months of cycling. And then we want them to have their first calf around 24 months of age. So we want them to be calving at about age two. So that's why it's important to achieve pregnancy around 15 months. And then we want them to wean their first calf around 32 months of age. And then we want to continue having a calf every year and keep them on an annual um, calving uh, calving season. So those are kind of some landmark time periods for you guys to remember when talking about reproduction for heifers. All right, we have another question on chat. It says, did you ever separate the bull from the heifers? So with that in question in mind, um, a lot of people do have breeding seasons, which in turn creates calving seasons. So if you stick your bull with your cows or your heifers for 30 days, 90 days, 180 days. When you pull those bulls out, that same time frame at the end of the nine months is going to be considered your calving season. So if that's something that you're interested in, yes, we would recommend that. So the next one is from Facebook. And the question was, would you recommend AI right after a cow calved, meaning 28 days later? or waiting longer. And we would recommend waiting later. Um, so cattle will go through a time called a postpartum anestrus. And this is when they do not experience estrus. So we need to get past that postpartum interval to be able to ha continue their cycle and to start br the breeding season. Um, so this can take up to 40 days or longer, but there are management strategies that you can utilize to reduce those postpartum intervals, including a good nutrition program. All right, and on the Zoom chat, we have another question that says, do cows have behavioral changes when pregnant? So from my experience, sometimes their mama instincts can keep, kick in earlier or later within their pregnancy. Um, if you've ever seen a, a mama cow with a calf on the ground and sometimes she kind of scoots at you and acts like she's going to catch you, that's just her being a protective mama. So sometimes cows, while they are pregnant, those instincts do start to kick in, but other cows, they're still very docile, very calm and collected. So another one we had in the chat, can keeping track of the cow's estrus cycle be beneficial during the birthing process even without an AI? So this kind of goes back to what um, Taylor was talking about earlier and keeping that um, a certain breeding season, so whether you have a 60 or 90 day breeding season, that's what will really help tr you track um, like when you should be expecting calves. So I would say that that would be a better time to have that defined um, breeding season when you know the bulls were placed or um, to be able to track calving. 
So on the Zoom chat, I see another question. It's called, or not it's called, it says, what exactly is palpation? So palpation, there is manual palpation, which you actually do with your hand. Um, when palpating, you never want to go actually into the reproductive tract because you can contaminate it. So what we do actually is you go through the rectum. So you go through the rectum and the lining between the recto, rectal wall and the um, reproductive tract is very, very thin. So when you do go in there, you use your hands to manipulate and kind of push down a little bit and you're actually able to feel the reproductive structures through that wall. You have to be very, very careful though. You don't want to puncture it or, or harm the animal in any way. Um, so it does take a lot of time and effort and skill to really perfect the art of palpation. So that's manual palpation. You also might see some people using um, an ultrasound machine, very similar to ultrasounds or sonograms that as a female woman, um, you might get when you are pregnant. So uh, many veterinarians use that again through the rectum. So they hold it in their hand and they just push it into the rectum and on a screen it can show you, you know, what it looks like within the reproductive tract. All right, so then another question we have here is how many is the most calves from one cow? So really our goal is to produce one calf per year for every cow that was either AI'd or exposed to a bull. Um, however, they can have twins. Um, this is not as common, but our goal is to typically have one calf per breeding season. All right, and another question that I see on the Zoom chat, it says, how can overconditioning be avoided while maintaining a safe weight recovery during the off season? So um, I'm assuming that means while they're pregnant or when they're dry, um, sometime in, in between there. Um, just, just make sure that you are not over supplementing them um, for the most part, they should just be on, on forage, on grass, or hay. Um, based off how big your, your animal is um, and their weight-wise is how much per pound you should be supplementing per day. So there is a, a scientific formula to that. Um, and just making sure that they do get exercise, that you're not confining them in one small area. Um, and just intermingling with other cattle can, can make sure that they don't get overweight. Like Sonia said in the presentation, we do use the, mes the method body condition scoring. Um, if that's something you're interested in, we can give you some information on that. It's pretty much um, a method using just your eyes. Um, you kind of learn what a one looks like, a two looks like, a three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine being obese and one being emaciated. So whenever you look at an animal, you typically always want them to be between a four and a six. That's your healthy weight, all right? So um, that is one way that you can just visually every day practice that that um, that formula um, to make sure that your cows do stay at a very healthy weight and don't become obese. So the next question we have in the chat, is there an age-wise limit for helpers giving birth? Um, so this is kind of what we discussed before that we want them to become pregnant at around 15 months of age. So if um, they miss the first breeding season, we can um, try to um, breed them again in the second breeding season. But if you continue to have open heifers, you may wanna consider calling them from your herd. Um, so this is something that is a management consideration that you need to take, but the goal is to have them breeding uh, pregnant by 15 um, months of age. All right, in the chat, um, someone did comment that they have palpated before and they thought it was really awesome. So that, that's really great to hear. Sometimes people are a fan of it, sometimes people aren't. It's just something you have to get used to if that's you know, a field that you're interested in going in. Another question that we have on the chat, it says, is there a way to determine a calf's gender beforehand? So typically with natural mating, um, as a cow-calf producer, you're just wanting a calf on the ground. Really, regardless of if it's a, a female or a male, 
Um, there's a market for both of those. So you do get paid at the end kind of regardless. Um, but if you're artificially inseminating, there is a way now because you do it through um, AI straws to select, they are able to go in there with the chromosomes and select, you know, this will be a female and this will be a male. So if that is a route that you're interested in, like I know many dairies do that. Um, Colleen discussed that yesterday, I believe, talking about how they do prefer to have, you know, females just for an industry for milking purposes. But from a beef side of things, most cow-calf producers are just wanting a calf on the ground. So yesterday, one of our students that is online mentioned that she had taken a class. She would gotten a certificate from Texas A&M um, last year, I think it was. Do you guys have any other suggestions um, or programs that you're aware of that these guys could check into if they want to learn more about reproduction or, or AI? -ing? Um, I know in South Florida, um, I'm part of a group called the South Florida Bee Forage Group, and it is a group of livestock ag agents from Central Florida South, and we do have a reproductive management school coming up in November. Um, I believe it's November 5th through the 7th, I want to say, um, but with everything that's going on, we might be doing it virtually. So be on the lookout for that. We do touch on more in-depth um, artificial inseminating, how to palpate. Um, so if that is something you're interested in, that's coming this fall. You can reach out to us to get signed up. But I also know that through the University of Florida, um, they do an AI school in the spring. Um, I'm not really sure who runs that anymore. Liz, do you happen to know any more information about that? No, I am not okay. familiar. Okay. Um, if you're interested in that, just reach out and let us know, and we can get you the contact for it. Okay. All right. And um, just so everybody knows, in the chat for Zoom, I have added the link for the Youth Field Day booklet, and it is there now. And just before the booklet on this page is where you are going to find all the recordings for this week's videos. And, um, and I will share this information with everybody on Facebook once we get a little break. Um, and also at the very end of today's program, I am going to share on chat here and on Facebook a survey link. And we would very, very much appreciate to have your feedback. So you only need to do the survey once for the whole event. So even if you did multiple sessions, there's an opportunity in this survey to give feedback on the programs. So watch for and please complete the survey. Now, before we go to a little preview video that I'd like to show and do the drawing for the prizes today, um, Liz and Sonia, is there anything in particular you might like to say in closing about today's class or to our audience? Um, I just want to say thank y'all for, for meeting with us this week. Um, I know that was a, might be a lot of uh, five days in a row, but it means a lot a world to us because we love giving this information out to y'all and we love to hear your questions and your feedback and concerns that you may have. So um, thank you so much for meeting with us today and have a great 4th of July weekend. And if you have any further questions, you can reach out to us. I believe our emails are attached to the presentations. So if you think of something later that you want to know more about reproduction, feel free to contact us and we will try our best to get the answer to you.